Thank you. Please be seated. Council, while we're waiting for Ms. Wilmot to return, could you approach, please? Do you need to have uh, an in-chambers conference with Ms. Arias present? It's an ex-party proceeding. Thank you. Please be seated.
Please be seated. The record will show the presence of the jury, the defendant, and all counsel. Mr. Martinez, you may continue with cross-examination. Ma'am, your assessment in this case and your opinion in this case was based in large part on an interview that you had with the defendant, correct? Incorrect. So you did not base your assessment on a 44-hour interview that you had with the defendant? I based it on the materials that I, I told you that I've read. So in terms of your assessment, nothing of what the defendant told you was important to you? I didn't say that. I said that I didn't base my, my opinion entirely on my 44-hour interview. My question was, isn't it true that your opinion in this case was based, based in large part on an interview with the defendant? In part. Oh, so it, it's a 50-50 kind of split? I've just never really thought about the split, Ms. Martinez. I just take everything that I get. So you don't know? Sustained. Did you finish your response? When I take a case, I explore every aspect of that case that I can. Sustained. Next question. So in this case, though, you did talk to the defendant, correct? Yes, I did. And you made a determination in your mind that she was being truthful, correct? I made an, an, an assessment that it was worth pursuing. Ma'am, do you remember that you and I had a conversation, and during that conversation that you told me you found the defendant to be truthful? I found the defendant to be credible, and I would move on with my investigation. Which means you found her to be truthful, right? All right. No, not all right. Isn't that what you found? I found her to be credible. Yes, and I did. Cre and credible means the same thing as being truthful, right? I found her to be believable, yes. And believable means truthful, right? I wasn't, you're asking me for a yes or no, Mr. Martinez, and what I would say to you is, I found her to be believable enough so that I would continue with the case. So you believed her, is what you're saying? I believed enough to be able to continue with the case. And when you say that you believed enough, it seems to leave open the fact that perhaps you didn't believe some of the things that she was saying. It said that I was willing to pursue the case. I'm not asking you about whether or not you were willing to pursue the case. Do you remember that when we, asked, when we started this exchange, you and I, I asked you about your assessment. Do you remember that in your opinion? Yes, I do. I'm asking you about the assessment and the opinion. Based, your assessment and opinion is based in part, as you said, on your conversation with the defendant, right? Correct. And you found her during that conversa those conversations to be believable, right? I found her to be believable in terms of what I talked to her about at that time. So the answer is yes, you found her believable during those 44 hours, correct? I found her to be believable. Are, you're asking me about my first or my entire 44 hours? My question indicated 44 hours, ma'am. Do you understand that? I do understand that, Mr. Martinez. All right, then, in those 44 hours, did you find her to be believable? Yes, I did. And that's part of the reason why you came in and gave us the opinion that you gave us in this case, right? In part. That's right. And are you familiar with the concept of secondary gain? Yes, I am. And the concept of secondary gain is that in situations such as this, if it's to the person's benefit, they may be deceitful, correct? They may be deceitful. And in this case, you found no issue with regard to the secondary gain involving this defendant, right? I met Ms. Arias. Judge, she's non-responsive. It's a yes or no. Sustained. Can you answer yes or no, please? It's not really a yes or no question. Then we will move on. Okay. Ma'am, with regard to this particular case, the thought of secondary gain, did that even enter your mind? Sure. And did you assess it? There's not a real way to assess secondary gain other than by looking at collateral data, which I looked at. I'm not asking you what you looked at. I'm asking you whether or not you assessed it, yes or no. You assess it by looking at collateral Judge, data. Judge, she's just not responding to me. Judge, she's attempting to respond. It's not a yes or no answer. Overruled. Ma'am, I'm asking you yes or no. Oh, I'm sorry. Retract. Yes or no. 
Did you consider the issue of secondary gain in this case? I said that I did. And with regard to this issue of secondary gain, you, after whatever assessment that you made or whatever you considered, you decided that the issue, uh, there was no secondary gain issue in this case, right? I did not make an assessment of whether there was secondary gain in terms of looking, once I had looked at all the other information, there's always something that you put in the back of your head, Mr. Martinez, about what somebody's secondary gain might be. You consider that in everything. And so you take that picture and you investigate that picture and you pull in your collateral sources to do that, Mr. Martinez. And that's what I did. So I pulled you're... in all the sources that I could possibly pull in to be able to assess. So your conclusion is, based on whatever it is that you did in your mind, ma'am, your conclusion is there was that, th that there was no secondary gain here, right? I never said no secondary gain or secondary gain. I, I, I looked at all of the material and believed Miss Arias confessed to the crime. Judge, she's not being responsive to the question that she's trying to ask. another question. With regard to this issue of secondary gain, ma'am, whether you looked at material, whether you didn't look at material, whether you did 44 hours or whether you did 38 and a half, however you looked at it, when whatever you considered, isn't it true that you really didn't reach a decision with regard to secondary gain in this case? I considered it in my decision, Mr. Martinez. So you did consider the issue of secondary gain and decided that there was no problem with that particular issue in this case? I decided that there was domestic violence. Judge, she's just not being responsive. Sustained. You may approach.
yes or no. Did you rule out secondary gain with regard to the defendant? I did not rule out secondary gain. So that means that in your assessment, there's still an impossibility then that the defendant, whatever reason she may have had, may have been less than truthful with you, correct? It was open to my other assessments that I was, I have a limited scope uh, here, Mr. Martinez. Sustained. I'm sustained. Next question. My question is this, since you did not rule out the, this issue of secondary gain, isn't it true, ma'am, that because your assessment was lacking in that aspect, that she, the defendant, could have been less than truthful with you in those 44 hours that you spoke with her? I didn't rule out secondary gain. I looked at it in the context of all the other information. I was limited to looking at domestic violence and I was to assess whether I believe there was domestic violence. And Mr. Martinez, I assessed that there was. That's my, that was what I was supposed to do. Sustain, next question. We know what you were there to do, but in assessing domestic violence, you by necessity have to take into account what the defendant is saying, whether or not she's being truthful, correct? Correct. And that involves the issue of secondary gain, doesn't it? It certainly does. And in this case, you just told us that you did not rule it out, which, which means that you did not, in this case, complete an assessment that was free, if you will, of this issue of the defendant being truthful. There's not an assessment that rules out secondary gain, Mr. Martinez. Well, when you sit and you talk to somebody, one of the things that we talked about yesterday was whether or not you were the human lie detector. One of the things that you do have to do is make an assessment as part of your investigation as to whether or not an individual is telling you the truth or not, correct? There is always reasonable doubt, Mr. Martinez. That's what Objection this whole- not responsive. No, that's, it is responsive. Let me finish your question, or finish your answer, excuse me. Reasonable doubt is part of what you go into this with, I hope. Reasonable doubt is part of what any expert witness would go into a situation with. Reasonable doubt is what the jury goes in with. It's what, it's what you go in with, and then you build your foundation and you look to see whether or not you have the foundation for this. I believed I have the foundation for this or I would never have proceeded. With regard to this issue of reasonable doubt, that's the standard that you applied then. Is that what you're saying? I, I always... Yes or no? Sure. And in this case, when you were assessing the defendant's statement, even though you did not rule out secondary gain, you applied this other standard of reasonable doubt, right? I apply. Yes or no? It's no. It's a semantics thing, and I'm and I Judge, don't know where you go with this. Do right. you have an objection? Non-responsive. Sustained. Next question. So, ma'am, you did use the word beyond a reasonable doubt, didn't you? I did. I used the word reasonable doubt. Yes, you did. With regard to this issue of what you, in your assessment of the defendant's statements to you, right? I have skepticism when I go in and I look at that. I have doubt, of course I have doubt. I'm not asking you whether or not you had doubt. I'm asking you with regard to this case and the defendant's statement, why it was that you did not rule out this issue about whether or not she could have been less than truthful with you. I didn't say I didn't look at that. So you did rule it out then? I didn't entirely rule out anything. So are you saying you did believe her or not? Which of the two? I believed her and I continue as I do with my other cases to keep an open mind about what may come up. So when I do a case, I can pull out of that case at any time if I I'm don't believe. I'm not asking believe you if you can pull out of a case. I am asking you whether or not you believed her in this evaluation. That's all I'm asking you. Yes, I believe her. And one of the things that you did in this particular evaluation 
is only talk to her, correct? In, in what part of the evaluation? Any part of the evaluation. Isn't it true that you did not talk to any, you didn't talk to Mr. Alexander, did you? No, I did not. You didn't talk to any of the other witnesses, right? No, I did not. The only person that you talked to was the defendant, right? Correct. And so in basing your opinion, you based it on large part or small part on the word of one person that was involved in the relationship, right? Objection to the previous testimony. The question you relied on. So to me, answer. I based it on all of the information that I read, not just on this. I read, I'm talking I read about for witnesses. hours and hours and hours more than just looking at Ms. Arias. I understand that you want to tell us that you reviewed, you sat in your office and you read. That's not what I'm interested in. I'm interested in the mouth moving and you talking to somebody else and their mouth moving. Do we understand that that's what I'm asking? I understand. And with regard to that particular issue, there was only one person that you talked to, and that was the defendant, right? Correct. You didn't speak to Mr. Alexander, right? Objection, answer, answer. Sustained. And in your assessment of these things, there are always two sides to every issue, aren't there? In domestic violence. In anything. In domestic violence, the saying goes that, as opposed to the truth being somewhere in the middle, that the truth is worse than either story because both people are minimizing and denying the story. And you didn't, so, you didn't speak to Mr. Alexander or anybody else about whether or not she was minimizing or changing the story or anything, right? Or whether he was. Exactly, whether anybody was, correct? I read his words, as many I, as I had. Ma'am, I'm talking about talking to people. Of did, course, did, I, I did not talk to other people, Mr. Martinez. I and did not. one of the things that you told us with regard to these type of valuations is that 90% of all communication is nonverbal, right? Sure, you can take that any way you want. Yes or no, that's how I want to take it. It's not yes or no. You didn't testify to that previously in this court? I made a statement. Yes or no? Did you testify to that? In a verbal conversation, much like you and I are having, I bet people here can read in what's going on non-verbally between the two of us, and that's what I was talking about. I'm not interested in what you may be feeling with regard to the prosecutor. I'm asking whether or not you made the statement that in a clinical interview, 90% of the communication is nonverbal. Did you make that statement? Yes. And with regard to this interview that you had with the defendant, one of the people that was involved in it was missing because he's been killed, right? Yes. And so if we apply the mathematics to it, 45, you have a 45% chance of being wrong just right off the bat because you don't have the other person there, right? Objection, I agree. No. Right? No. One of the other things that you told us yesterday was that for you, the defendant told the truth as you knew it throughout her life, but yet when this killing happened, that's when she had problems with the truth, right? That's what you told me yesterday, right? Yes. Which means that you, by chance or by design investigated her truthfulness before this incident, right? Yes. Did you speak to her father about her truthfulness growing up? No, I did not. Don't you agree that, what is his name? Bill. Don't you agree that Bill Arias would know about whether or not the defendant had been truthful growing up? He would have a, a view of her truthfulness for sure. Right, just like anything you tell us now is a view of her truthfulness, isn't it? Correct. And don't you think that his view of her truthfulness has a much better basis than yours? He has a much longer history with her and he has a, a questionable history with her. Whether or not he has a questionable history with her, she grew up in his house, didn't she? She did. He saw her on a day-to-day -day basis, right? He did. You didn't, did you? No, I did not. He dealt with her when she went to school, right? Correct. 
And he dealt with her whenever she had any issues. You did not, right? Correct. And he would know better than you whether or not the defendant had a reputation for honesty Objection. growing up. Pardon? Speculation. Overall, to me, answer. Right? Oh, yeah. And so, did you review his conversation with the detective in which he talked about the defendant's truthfulness after the age of 14? Objection. You may.
Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask you to go back to the jury room for approximately 10 minutes. Please remember the admonition. You are excused. The record will show the jury has left the courtroom. Please be seated. Court is still in pro process. Mr. Martinez, you may examine the witness. And then can I inquire as to how much of a clip this is? Is this the entire interview, or are we just going to hear part of it? Nine seconds. I, I, would, ask for, I would ask for more information so that Ms. Lavalette can give an answer. All right, Mr. Martinez. She, she want, he wants more information. Do I need to address the issue of more information? Yes, please. With, this witness. with regard to this uh, particular case, ma'am, the truthfulness of the defendant is important to you, right? Correct. And in fact, you've spent 44 hours with her, correct? Correct. And in part, whether it's a small or a large part, in part, your opinion is based on what the defendant told you, correct? Correct. And then you went out and you corroborated what the defendant told you in an effort to see whether or not she was being truthful, correct? Yeah, and some prior to, right. to meeting with her as and well. In and in fact, yesterday when we talked about it, you told us yesterday that yes, you believe the defendant was untruthful, but it was, but her untruthfulness was after the murder. Do you remember telling me that yesterday? Her, her pattern of untruthfulness. Right, yes. was after the murder, correct? Yes. And that I asked you specifically about before the murder, and you said you didn't see any uh, indications that she was untruthful, correct? With her prior boyfriends. With anything. Remember, you told us that we talked about whether I, that I didn't have I didn't have any evidence. I didn't see anything that she was untruthful. Correct. Correct. But you are aware that there was an interview between her and uh, between her father and the detective, uh, Steve Flores. Correct. I I didn't have that information. So you didn't have that information. But if there is information out there from her father that indicated that the defendant was. Yes, may we approach? You may.
Exhibit Never, she's never been honest with us since then. And she was uh, probably 14 then. Did you hear that? No, I didn't. All right, let's play it again. I've never, she's never been honest with us since then. And she was uh, probably 14 then. Did you hear him say, she hasn't been honest with us since then, and she was 14? Did you hear that? Yes, I did. With regard to this particular case, this is not something that you knew when you testified yesterday, correct? No, it is not something I knew. Pardon? No, it is not something I knew. Isn't this something that you would have wanted to consider in deciding whether or not the defendant was being, uh, whether or not you were going to believe the defendant uh, in this particular case? Objection, Judge, it would be inappropriate to ask the witness this without context to the entire interview. Uh -oh. This is outside the presence of the jury. You may answer the question. Well, I would not take a sound bite of anything and, and make a decision on it. So I'd want to hear the whole, I'd want to hear the whole tape. And I'd also want to put in perspective the things I'd heard about Mr. Arias. And I'd want to put into perspective what I know about teenagers. But my question to you is this, the fact that this person, her father, is saying that she hasn't been honest since the age of 14. Objection in the answer, I said. Sustained. Well, let's hear it again, OK? And then I'll ask you a question. I've never, she's never been honest with us since then. And she was uh, probably 14 then. Did you hear what he said? Yes, I did. He said she's never been honest with us since then, right? Right. And he also said she was 14, correct? Correct. Isn't that imp go? contrary doesn't that fly in the face of what you just testified to yesterday that she was always honest before the killing it doesn't fly in the face until I've assessed it I need to find out I, I the information I had I didn't have information that she had lied when you get information from a parent that a child lies to them in, during teenage years, that does not necessarily characterize someone as a liar or not. And so I would want to take that into account with the information I had that was regarding Mr. Arias as well and his rationale for, for perhaps for the reason that she did lie to him. What you're saying is that you would consider it and then you would explain this statement? I would consider it, and then I would decide what I was going to do with it once it was considered. Right. And it would be part of the file then, right? That's something you would consider then, right? Yes, it would. I don't have anything else. Ms. So Wilmot, did you have any questions on this issue? Not until she is able to have a better context of what this is actually about. I'd, I'd like be able to either see the, see the entire interview. All right, Council Perk.
Mr. Martinez, are you ready? Oh, yes, I am. Thank All right, we'll bring in the jury. Please be seated. The record will show the presence of the defendant, the jury, and all counsel. Mr. Martinez, you may continue. With regard to this issue of the defendant's truthfulness, one of the things that you learned as part of your investigation was that the defendant said that after the murder, she had cuts on her hands because she had cut them on apples, right? Yes. And um, did you also hear, for example, other stories other than that she had cut them on her hands on apples while she was cutting apples? Did you hear anything else about that? About the cuts? About the cuts on her hand, how they came about. I, I don't recall hearing any other story other than the cuts on the hands for the apple. Um, and so that's one of the things that you believed when you were talking to the defendant that the cuts that she suffered during this killing were as a result of her cutting apples, right? I didn't believe that. So as you're going along, you're making assessments as to what you believe and what you don't believe, right? Oh, wait a minute. I'm, I'm sorry. I was unclear. You're saying that I believe that she got the cuts from the apple. No, I'm saying that isn't it true that your notes reflect the fact that your information is that the cuts the defendant had after this killing resulted when she was slicing apples, right? Right. And you believe that, right? I, I don't, I don't, um, I don't recall that I focused on that as much as what I was retained to do, which was look at whether or not there was domestic violence in the context of the relationship, which was really what I was intended, I mean, what I'm, I came on to do. I'm not asking you whether or not you focused on that. You understand that? I you under, understand I, that? I understand what you're saying. I'm asking you whether or not you believe the defendant when she told you, or the information that you received during this investigation, whether or not you believe that the cuts to her hands were caused while she was cutting apples, green apples. Objection, Judge Foundation, as to when, where this happened. Sustained. Well, ma'am, let me show you your notes about this particular incident, okay? I may need my glasses.
we'll take a look at Exhibit 605. We'll take a look at the highlighted portion. And once you've read the highlighted portion, let me know. Did you read the entire page? Yes. May I have it back, please? Sure. This is your handwriting, right? Yes, it is. And this deals with this issue about the cuts on the hands that the defendant received at the time of Travis's death, right? Correct. And in it, your notes reflect that Jody said cuts on her hands were from cutting apples, right? Correct. So with regard to that issue about cutting apples, did you verify whether or not that, that may or may not have been true? No, I did not. You could have gone to collateral sources, like you said, right? I could have. You could have gone, for example, to the police report, right? I could have. You didn't do that, right? I did read the police report. And do you know whether or not there were any statements in that police report of what the defendant said caused the cuts on her hands? No, I don't. But you did read the police report, right? I read the police report very long ago and didn't reread it. So the answer is you did read the police report, right? I did read the police report. And do you know whether or not, from your memory, whether or not there was any indication what she said caused the cuts on her hands? No, I don't. One of the things that you told us was that you reviewed, did you, re well, let's do it this way. Did you review her statements to the police? I did. I reviewed them a long time ago. And I'm I not asking you, am I asking you when you reviewed them, ma'am? You're I'm asking not. me if I reviewed them, and I'm putting that in the context that I reviewed them a very long time ago. I'm not asking you for a context. Do we understand each other? I understand you don't want context. Ma'am, Judge, she's, I would ask that she be admonished for the last comment as to what the prosecutor wants. Yeah, she answered the question. All right, move on. Next question. Ma'am, with regard to this particular case, you did review her statements to the police, right? I did. You reviewed the videotapes, right? To the police? Yes. No, I did not. So you just reviewed a transcript of it, right? T correct. And in that transcript, isn't it true that there's a different version of how she cut that finger? I guess there is because you're telling me and I don't remember. No, I, I don't want you to. So I don't remember. I don't recall, Mr. Martinez. Let's honestly. All right. Let's assume, let's assume that there were four different versions of how that finger was cut. Assume that there are four different versions of how she cut her fingers. Wouldn't that cause any problems for you in evaluating this case because there clearly is an inconsistency there? Mr. Martinez, people yes lie. Yes or no? No, that would not be a complete answer. All right. Um, no, it would not cause a problem for you, or yes, it would cause a problem for you? I cannot answer that yes or no and be honest about how I answer it. With regard to this case also, you were aware of this issue involving gas cans that the defendant uh, supposedly asked her boyfriend about before she took this trip. You're familiar with that, right? Daryl Brewer. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. You're familiar with that. And you're familiar with that, the fact that before she went on this trip, she, call, she asked Mr. Brewer for the use of two gas cans to take on the trip, right? I am. And in fact, that caused you problems, didn't it? I'm not sure what you mean. Well, that caused you problems in terms of the defendant's truthfulness, didn't it? I you, you look over there. No, no, I'm not asking the question. No, no, that I'm, caused I'm, you problems, didn't it? I don't believe it did. I well, think. let's take a look at your notes. All right. Let me show you an exhibit first. Okay. Give you a little 
context, take a look at Exhibit 607. Read the whole thing and then let me know when you're done. All right. Have you read it? Yes, uh huh. That's your handwriting on this particular page, right? Right. And it does reference this issue involving the gas, the borrowing of two gas cans from Daryl Brewer, right? Right, but I. I it, yes or no? Does it? Yes, yes, it does. And it doesn't it indicate that on the last week of May of 2008, Jody told Daryl she needed to borrow two gas cans because she was taking a long trip to Mesa. Doesn't it say that? In part it says that. It does say that though, doesn't it? In part it says that. Well, let's read the whole part. Last week of May of 2008, Jody told Daryl she needed to borrow two gas cans because she was taking a long trip to Mesa and didn't want to run out of gas, right? That's what it says. That's in part what it says. That's not what the rest of it I'm says. I'm talking about the issue involving the, the gas cans. That's all it says about the gas cans, doesn't it? Well, it talks I'm about the about trip. The gas cans. Take a look at it. I, I looked at it. I, I took notes on what people said. I took the notes right off what people said. I don't necessarily have a problem with what I said. I took notes to ask questions. And isn't that how you do your did the evaluation in this case? You take what somebody said, and then you look at everything else, and then you come in and tell us that this is domestic violence, right? This doesn't have anything to do in particular with the domestic violence I was assessing, Mr. Well, Martinez. You took this, you used the same procedure with regard to this particular issue that you used with regard to any other issue in this case, right? I'm not certain that that would be true, but I, I, I'm not certain what you're referring to. What well, I, did, I did with this case, if you want to know what I did with this no, case. No, I don't want to know what you did with okay. this case. I want to, you to answer my question. And my question to you is, isn't it true that you've been telling us that in this case, you've looked at writings and you reviewed those and took those into account, right? Correct. Isn't that the same thing that you did with regard to the gas cans? You read it, you took it into account, and you made notes on it, right? I did. And with regard to that particular issue, that caused you some problems, didn't it? No, the gas cans didn't cause me problems. Isn't it true that you had an issue with that because you believe that perhaps the defendant may not be truthful? Isn't that a problem for you? I think my question was, what does this mean on the side of the page? And I was asking about what that meant. I wanted to get a description of what erratic behavior meant. Actually, isn't it true, ma'am, that what you thought back then is why did the defendant want to borrow two gas cans from Daryl? Did she know she was going to... Your he's reading from something that's not been marked or in evidence. Listing. Isn't it true that you were concerned that she had told you about the trip and now you have this issue about her going to Mesa and then you said, I thought this was a last minute decision. Didn't that create a problem for you? All the words. I, I didn't hear the question. Isn't it true that you had questions about it because you thought it was a last minute decision to go to Mesa? I still think it was a last minute decision. And that caused you problems in the context of exhibit number 607, which is what she told you about Daryl and the gas cans, right?
I had a problem. Listen, listen, take a look at I this. had a question. You're, you're saying a problem. I had a question. Take a look at 608. See if you recognize the highlight, the whole page. I, I did yes, ask her that. Hold on. Ma'am, did you read Exhibit 608? Yes, I did. That's in your handwriting, right? Correct. And in fact, the approach that you took here were some looking at things that you had problems with in this case, right? I had questions about Questions that you had in this case, right? Yes. And one of the questions that you had in this case involved the gas cans, didn't it? Yes, it did. And in fact, you indicated that... You, your words were something to the effect of you thought it was a last-minute decision and it was creating a conflict for you, right? I wanted to make sure that it was a last-minute decision. I had questions that I wrote throughout and I asked those questions. And that was one of the questions that you had, was that yes. you thought this was a last-minute decision, right? Yes. And thinking that it was a last-minute decision, in your mind it did not make any sense that she would go to Daryl Brewer and ask for two gas cans to go to Mesa because that happened many days before the trip started, right? Objection, please characterizing what Ms. Arias actually said. She never said that. The, the summary of the notes are not what Ms. Arias said. Well, overruled. You may continue. Okay. Okay. You may answer. Oh, um, I had a question about the gas cans. And one of the questions I had was because I don't know how far Utah is from Wairika. I wanted to know why she needed gas cans. That's all. But and, you're and, and I wanted to know if there was a decision to go to Mesa, which I had written. And later in that same page, it talks about the trip to Southern California and Utah. So I wasn't clear about whether Mesa was an intended trip or not, and I well, want to find out whether it was. Are you saying, ma'am, that you did not write in your notes last week of May 8th, 8, Jody told... Objection, Your Honor, you didn't present an exhibit. It's not in evidence. Absolutely am. I'm impeaching her now with the statement because she, if, if you want, I'll address it. No. Judge, it's not... Approach, counsel.
been telling us is that you took statements from a number of people, and we right. call them collateral sources, right? Correct. And you looked at those statements from other people, these collateral sources, and then you compared them to other collateral sources and any statements by the defendant, right? Correct. In this particular case, you viewed the statement of a collateral source, right? I did. Daryl Brewer, right? Correct. And, during, and in viewing the statement of Daryl Brewer, there was this statement about the defendant requesting or asking to borrow some gas cans in late May of 2008, right? Correct. And with regard to this statement from Mr. Brewer involving the gas cans being borrowed in 2008, the indication was that the defendant told him she needed to borrow two gas cans because she was taking long trip to Mesa and didn't want to run out of gas, right? Correct. In terms of you saying Utah and talking about Utah and how far Utah is, this page, ma'am, take a look at it again. It has no mention of Utah whatsoever, does it? Read it. Jody said she was going to visit. No, no, read it to yourself. It does mention Utah. And it mentions it at the very bottom, doesn't it? No, it mentions it uh, a pair of, about a, in the same paragraph as, as the question about Mesa, and it mentions the Grand Canyon. All right, go ahead. Let me have it back. Okay. But it mentions Utah, ma'am, after she goes to Mesa, right? It says Mesa, and then it says the other things. Right, and it talks about what she's going to do it, but it doesn't talk about Utah first, does it? No. And that created a problem for you, didn't it? I had to ask a question. Oh. Didn't it? It created a question for me. Okay, it created a question for you because you thought this decision to go to Mesa was a last minute decision, right? Correct. And what you did is, with regard to this issue, even though you reviewed a statement to the police and all the other items in this case, you decided to resolve this conflict or this question in favor of the defendant, right? I asked the, the defendant about it. She told me that she was going to, that she had not said she was going to Mesa, she was going to Utah. And the, the also the um, journals indicated and the IMs when they were talking about planning trips. So I used other things to look at that. But yes, I had a question about it for sure. And you decided to resolve it in favor of the defendant irrespective of what you used, right? Irrespective of what sources you used, right? No, I, in, in respect to, to other sources I used. And I don't remember the police report. I'm very sorry, I, I don't remember that. With this, with regard to this issue as to whether or not she was going to Mesa first, ma'am, isn't it a fact that you could have just called or had an interview with Mr. Brewer to try to determine what it was that he said? You could have done that, right? You do that as part of your investigations, don't you? I could have, but I was basically told to rely on the information that I had. Well, now, now you're indicating that you were restricted somehow by somebody. I don't want to know who was, you, you were restricted by. Did, have you ever voiced an objection here during testimony that you were ever restricted in your approach in this case? No. And in this case, you, no one was directing your investigation, was it? Were they? No. You're independent. In other words, you have an independent assessment here to make an independent assessment, right? Yes. And as part of that investigation, you could have spoken to Daryl Brewer to see whether or not what, he told, what his recollection was, right? I asked about interviewing other people, and I was given the, the information, the collateral sources.
Isn't it true then that with regard to your finding that there was domestic violence in this case because you didn't do this interview, isn't, and it talks about different stories, isn't it true that your assessment of domestic violence is deficient? No, I don't believe it is. Even though you didn't interview Mr. Brewer, correct? I yes or no? I, I don't want to get any further than yes or no on this one. Okay. I didn't interview Mr. Brewer. And even though you didn't interview, because you didn't interview Mr. Brewer, your assessment in this case, at least to a certain extent, is lacking. I don't think so. And you didn't interview, well, you're the one that told us that with regard to these kinds of things, um, conversations are only part of, uh, conversations can form a part of your investigation, right? You did say that though, right? Yes or no? The conversations are part of my, right. And in fact, in other cases, you have conducted interviews with other people, correct? In most murder cases, I have not. So I've used collateral sources. So you're saying that with regard to your um, assessments in criminal cases, don't restrict it to, 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 to murder cases, with regard to the criminal cases, what you're saying is you don't interview other people, you just interview the defendant and look at collateral sources. Is that right? Is that it, what you're saying? it depends on the case and it depends on what is available for me to review. In some cases, there are financial restrictions. They say these interviews have been done. Um, I'm giving those interviews. So it depends on the attorney and it well, depends, and it doesn't matter whether it's the prosecution or the defense. Mr. Martinez, it's there's a limit to what they give me. And I'm, I'm really not asking you to go into that, and if you don't mind not going into that area okay. that you just went into, okay? Right. I'm just asking you whether or not, it's a yes or no, and if you can't answer yes or no, tell me and we'll move on, all right? Okay. With regard to uh, your other criminal cases, isn't it true that in those other criminal cases, on occasion, you have conducted interviews? Yes or no? I really am reflecting on the criminal cases, trying to reflect on the criminal cases that I have done. Generally, it's been paperwork. Generally means that you have, at least on a couple of occasions. I'm, I'm leaving it open because I know that you are, you know, it's like very precise and I am not certain. So, so you I, don't know is what you're saying? Yes, I'm not certain. Ma'am, one of the things that your investigation revealed in this case, and we've talked about this issue of secondary gain, and we talked about some inconsistencies here. Uh, one of the things that your investigation revealed was that the defendant is very manipulative, isn't she? I don't think that my, I, I don't believe I said she was very manipulative. Isn't it true that you reviewed collateral sources that indicated the defendant was very manipulative? There were collateral sources that said she was manipulative. Right. Isn't it true that, in fact, it was people that were close to her who indicated, for example, that... Objection, Judge. You can come in for a minute. You may approach. You may approach. Continue. You received information that the defendant was manipulative, correct? 
Yes. In fact, you received information that the defendant was not abused. She just. Objection, judge. Overruled. Objection. 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 Objection.
And this information that she, whatever it was, the term is manipulative, this is something that you had when you were considering this whole issue of, of abuse, right? Correct. And again, you gave the benefit of the doubt to the defendant because you never even asked her about it, right? Did you even ask the defendant about her playing the victim? I asked her about that report, but I also looked at so statements did. from Jody's mother, Jody's sisters, Jody's grandparents, in, and, Jody's, and Jody's siblings in, in looking at the issue of Jody playing the victim. But you didn't speak to the defendant herself directly about it, did you? I don't recall if I did or not. Your note, do your notes reflect that you ever talked to the defendant about that? My notes don't reflect everything I talked to the victim. Or well, the, what did have, have the been defendant important about. in this case, since we're talking about abuse, to ask the defendant whether or not she had manipulated people into thinking she'd been abused before? I had talked to her about being abused before, and I never got an impression from her or from other collaterals that she was in the habit of playing the victim. And what I'm looking for are patterns of behavior here, Mr. Martinez, not isolated instances. I'm not asking about patterns. I'm asking about whether or not you asked her specifically about this issue, about her being accused of playing the victim when she was not abused. Objection. Ask again. I do not recall if I ask her specifically. And it, but isn't that what we're here to discuss? Whether or not the defendant was abused in a domestic violence situation? Isn't that what we're here to discuss? Yes. And so in the relationship with Mr. Alexander. I understand that, but we're talking about abuse though, right? We're talking about the relationship specifically with Mr. Alexander. And, and if in an other circumstance, the individual had pretended to be a victim of abuse, you don't consider that to, that to be important okay. in, your, in your assessment. This characterizes the notes that were on there and her testimony. Overall, you may answer the question. No other collaterals suggest that Ms. Arias is playing the victim or that she did. In fact, they talk about her being a victim of her father and her mother at times. Do you consider this information to be so unimportant that you didn't consider it? This information, was it so unimportant to you that you didn't even address it with the defendant? I am sure I addressed it to some degree. Then tell me what she said with regard to this issue about playing the victim. Tell me. Nothing that stands out in my mind. So you can't tell me anything, correct, about what she I said? I can tell you that she had... Yes or no? Can you tell me anything that she said with regard to this issue? I cannot tell you specifics, no. Ma'am, the other thing that we know is that not only is there this indication that she was manipulated at that age, isn't it true that after she... I actually the testimony. Manipulated at that age. That's not what it was. Sustained rephrase. With regard, isn't it true that we know that at, at that age, whatever the age that was, that she was perceived to be somebody who played the victim even though she was not abused? In addition to that, isn't it true that your investigation revealed... Overruled. Overruled. Isn't it true that your investigation revealed that after she killed Mr. Alexander, she was very manipulative? After she killed... Well, yes. Part one, I have one collateral source that says she was manipulative. So when you characterize me saying that she was manipulative, that is incorrect. Part two is, yes, she... I, I'm not sure what you're talking about in terms, if you could describe what you mean by manipulative. No. Afterwards, I would be... I'm I asking answer. whether or not you remember, as you're sitting there, any information from any source indicating that the defendant was manipulative uh, after, shortly after, she killed Mr. Alexander. Manipulative regarding what or to whom? Manipulative is, is, do you understand what the word manipulative means, right? 
Well, I'm not sure how you mean it, Mr. No. Mr. Martinez. Use the Webster di dictionary um, uh, in the uh, definition of it. What does manipulative mean to you? Manipulative can mean manipulating facts. It can be manip it can be deceiving people. If you're, is that what you're asking me? I'm asking you for your definition of manipulative. That's what I'm asking. If you you're asking me if she. No, I'm not. I'm asking for a definition of Webster's. Question that he's not letting, allowing her to finish her answer. Overruled. Ask your next question. Give me your definition of manipulative, whatever it may be. My definition? Yes, as you applied it in this case. I'm sorry, what's your question? Asked and answered. She already answered this question. Overruled. You may answer the question. That someone can manipulate or deceive or... Um... Gee, I haven't been asked for a Webster's Dictionary definition, but basically that... that you can uh, manipulate data means you can change them, that you can, uh, that you can deceive or tell half-truths that, you know. And with regard to the defendant, isn't it true that you received information that she was manipulative shortly after, in her relationship with men, shortly after the killing? With men? Yes. With what men? Well, do you remember, do you have it, do you even have any memory of your notes involving the defend, what the defendant did after she returned to Wairika? Objection, argument, Oh, well. Are you talking about her trip to see Ryan in Utah? No, no. Are you talking about her experience in the restaurant? I'm not, I, I have no idea what specifically, Mr. Martinez, you're talking about. Do you remember her experiences at the Purple Club? Do you remember the yes. at that? Yes. And do you remember that you have information involving the Purple Club with regard to uh, her interaction with men? Yes. And that interaction with men uh, indicated that she Objection, was... Objection, Judge. May continue. Ma'am, do you need your notes to refresh your recollection as to the incident at the Purple Club? Is this regarding, there were several interviews about the Purple Plum, so I'm not sure which one, which interview you're referring to, Mr. Martinez? I'm referring to the one involving whether or not the defendant was manipulated with men. 
there was there was an interview with uh, a waitress uh, who said she was manipulative um, or or only only was only nice to uh, good looking men. How about the interview with the manager, Carrie Franklin? Are you familiar with that? I am familiar with it. I don't remember every detail of it. If you like right, me let me look go ahead and provide that to you then. Sure. I may have it back. You're done reviewing it, correct? Yes, I am. This is your, this, these notes are in your handwriting, correct? Yes, they are. And you completed them as part of your investigation in this case, correct? I was taking notes on, on the interview, yes. And this is what you did with regard to this investigation. You would look at collateral sources and you would take notes, correct? Correct. And you would use them, either then or later, uh, as part of the evaluation. It's something you considered, right? Yes. And in this particular case, there was an individual that was the manager of the Purple Plum, right? Correct. And you talked to the defendant. She worked at the Purple Plum at some point, right? Yes, she did. And when she worked at the Purple Plum, there was this indication or your investigation revealed was that the defendant was manipulative towards men, right? Objection, foundation. I mean, Christine. Well, ma'am, what do your notes indicate that... Uh, um, well, do you want the date, ma'am? Take a look at the date uh, on Exhibit 610, if that refreshes your recollection as to when this happened. I'll, I'll point it out to you. Okay. What date are we talking about where this manipulation occurred? June 13th, 08. And during this manipulation, it involved men, the defendant and men, correct? Correct. And specifically, it involved the defendant, um, her interaction with men, correct? Correct. And your investigation revealed that she would feign... Approach, please.
part of the investigation that you found out was that the defendant was manipulative in her interaction with men, correct? Judge, objection. Overruled. You may answer yes correct. or no. She was flirtatious with them. I don't know if she was manipulative with them. She, he says she used them. All right. Using men, given your previous uh, definition, that's someone who's manipulative, correct? That would be correct. And so, given that, isn't that something that you, it's something that you considered and ultimately rejected in favor of the defendant, right? Actually, I looked at behavior after the homicide, and that was after the homicide. Right. That I would consider would be aberrant behavior, uh, and according to other, her other history in working in restaurants, that was never part of it. Uh, and at working at Casa Ramos, that was not part of it, according to the owner. So I looked at behavior after the murder, or after the killing, and I would say that unusual aberrant behavior would be part of that. And that's your assessment, if you will, of her behavior, correct? Yes. And that's your assessment of her behavior, even though the indications are what they are as part of the investigation, correct? The indications... Oh, well. The indications, they're, they're contrary indications with Casa Ramos different than, differently than Purple Plum. Yeah, but my, question, my point is that you decided to disregard these indications that she was manipulative as part of your assessment in this, as part of your opinion in this case, right? I didn't disregard them, I considered them. You considered them but chose to find them to not be of enough value to factor in into your assessment, right? I factored in behavior prior, her behavior toward men prior to the killing. I factored in her behavior with both restaurants. I factored them all in. You've already told us that, but my question to you is more pointed. You came in here and you indicated that the defendant was manipulated by Mr. Alexander, correct? Abused by Mr. Alexander. All right, he was, and that's that. That has a component of manipulation, correct? Yes, it would. And in fact, in this particular case, what we have is the defendant ex exhibiting manipulative behavior after she killed him, right? Correct. And what you're saying is, even though she's exhibiting manipulative behavior, I'm not going to believe that manipulative behavior. That's what you're saying, right? No, I'm not, no I'm not saying that. So I'm saying believe I believe that, that she could have been manipulative with men at that time. I'm not, if, I'm not disregarding that. If she is manipulative with men, you would agree that Travis Alexander was a man, right? I said she was... Yes or no? ...her testimony as to when the manipula supposed manipulation took place. Overruled. Yes or no? Was Mr. Alexander a man? Yes, he was. And you just told us that she could be manipulative with men. You just told us that, right? I said at this period of time, she was manipulative. And in Casa Ramos, which was during that period of time, the, the statements were that she wasn't. So I have no evidence prior to Mr. Alexander that she was manipulative with men. What, I just what, don't have that evidence. What you're telling me is that somebody is telling you According to you here, that there's no information on the left side, but on the right side, somebody's being very specific that she's manipulative, right? That's what you're, you're telling us, right? Objection. The paper the testimony was specific as to manipulation. There's no specificity. Oh, overall. You right? That's what you're telling us. You have two competing views, according to you, right? I have competing views. Yes or no? After the killing. Yes or no. You have two competing views. Casa Ramos on the left side, Purple Plum on the right side. You have two competing views, right? Those two comp competing right. views. And what you decided to do as part of this evaluation is tell me, well, I believe what people were saying at Casa Ramos, right? No, I did not say that. Well, you are disbelieving what people are saying at the Purple Plum, right? 
I am also looking at... Yes or no? Are you disbelieving what people are saying? I have other information about what people said at the Purple Plum that I also took into account, Mr. Martinez. And so what you're saying is that you're disbelieving what was said at the Purple Plum about her being manipulative. That's what you're telling me, right? Even if I say I believe that she was manipulative at that time, it doesn't mean I believe as a characteristic that she is. I could believe that she was manipulative at that time. It does not, it's situational. It doesn't mean that I believe as a characteristic of Ms. Arias that she's a manipulative person. And what we know with regard to this assessment is that when she was younger, she was, we have information from you that she was not abused and she liked to play the victim, right? Yes, you have that information, right? You, you're so just characterizing. The don't answer the question. I'm sorry, repeat the, the objection. The, the question is mischaracterizing the testimony. Overruled, you may answer. Right, you, you've told us about that when she was younger, right? That you have that information, right? I have one friend yes saying that. Yes or no? I have one friend, yes, or yes no. one friend. And then you're now telling us, and this is when she was younger, right? And now you have her immediately after the murder, five days after the murder, exhibiting manipulative behavior, yes or no? Yes. So what you're saying though is at one, you have an ex an expanse of years in between, right? Yes. And what you're choosing to say is, well, even though there was this behavior here when she was younger, and there's the same behavior when she was older, you're choosing to say that was aberrant. That is not something that was a characteristic of hers. That's what you're saying, right? I'm saying that what I hear from one teenage friend of hers is limited compared to what I heard from other sources in regard to Miss Arias. And so there is a preponderance of evidence on the one side and not on the other. That's and what, you're what saying I'm saying. Is, is that your standard that you use when evaluating this, this uh, evidence, the preponderance of the evidence? Is that what you're using? One I, is more likely true than not? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying that when I have numerous collateral no, no, no. sources. I'm at, no. I'm asking I, for your definition of preponderance of evidence. And I'm, telling, than, and I'm going to tell you what it is. is it, my question is more pointed than that. Does it mean more likely than not? No. You're using it differently. I am. What's the standard in one sentence that preponderance of the evidence means to you? For me, preponderance of evidence means that I have looked at all of the evidence that I have available to me, and I have gone through it and looked at what appears to be the truth. What for me makes sense, what for me after I weigh all of the evidence makes the most sense to me. And that's what I have to go on. What I have been presented with is what I have to go on. And your definition of preponderance then is what appears to be the truth. That's what you just said in part, right? In weighing the evidence. Right. What, and so in a sense, what you're saying is you're a human lie detector, right? Because whatever may appear to be the truth to you may not appear to be the truth to somebody else, right? I would not call myself a human lie detector. I think well, that you characterizes me. You evaluate this in terms of what appears to be the truth to you then, right? Right? And that's the and context of what I'm saying today. And what appears to be the truth to you in this case in terms of the purple plum and the Casa Ramos example, to you, the Casa Ramos example appears to be the truth. I yes or no? I didn't say that. Well, we were talking about it in the context of the Purple Plum. Didn't you tell us that that's what appeared to be the truth to you? No. The answer. I said that, that the, what they said at the Purple Plum could be true. So she could be manipulative towards men at that point, right? I said that yes situationally no? it yes. appeared that could be true. So that was their perception. So if it's true that she could be manipulative towards men on June 13th of 2008, it could also stand to reason that a week or two weeks before, let's just go with two weeks, two weeks before that, she could also be manipulative towards men, correct? It doesn't stand to reason. I'm sorry, the objection? Spe speculation. Overruled. Correct. It doesn't stand to reason. I know you're saying that this is your view of what you believe is the truth, but isn't it 
based on the continuum that we've established here, young, right after the murder, isn't it also true that it could be true that she was manipulative before the murder? Because it, approach. May continue. With regard to this issue of manipulation, it could be that we've seen two instances of manipulation here, correct? Objection made. Sustained I mean, your phrase. You told us about an incident that you investigated when she was a teenager, and you told us about an incident that you investigated on June 13th of 2008, correct? Correct. Prior to those are incidents that can be characterized as manipulative, is what you told me, right? Objection is characterized as, as an incident when she was a teenager. There's no incident. Oh, right. Correct? That wasn't an incident. These statements that were made when she was a teenager and somebody saying that she played the victim when she wasn't abused could be characterized as manipulative, yes or no? the evidence of the world, you may answer. Correct? They could. And you've already talked about the, the case involving the purple plum, and that could also be characterized as manipulative, correct? Yes, it could. Do you remember that we talked yesterday about a text message that was sent by the defendant um, to Mr. Alexander, and this text message was sent mistakenly do you remember that, that we talked about yesterday? Yes. It was to an individual named Stephen. Do you remember that? Yes. And that, as part of that text message being sent out, Mr. Alexander became upset, right? He you became saw very text. upset. Right. And then the defendant created another text message and sent it. And it was almost the same as the first one. Do you remember we discussed that? Yes. Could it be that this individual that uh, is manipulative, given those two incidents, could have sent that text message just to get a rise out of Mr. Alexander and manipulate him into paying attention to her? Are you asking me hypothetically if, if someone who is not Manip known to be manipulative with other men that she's with and spent incredible amounts of time with, if she could do a manipulative behavior, are you asking me if she, it's possible for sure. her to do something? Isn't it possible that that was manipulative also? It's possible that most of us have done something I'm not asking about you. I'm not asking about me. I'm asking about her. It's certainly possible. And with regard to her going to visit Ryan Burns, one of, you, you talked to her about that, right? Yes. And when she went to visit Mr. Burns, one of the things that happened was that they were involved in some sort of uh, sexual contact. Do you, understand, do you know about that? They were making out. And during the time that they were making out, 
One of the things that the defendant, do you know why the defendant was making out so shortly after the killing? Do you remember what she told you about that? I remember that she was trying to act normal. She was trying, which is another form of manipulation, isn't it? I don't, I think that's manipulating yourself. I think it's trying to make yourself feel normal in a situation that isn't. Well, ma'am, if she has Mr. Burns laying down and she gets on top of him and straddles him, do you really think that she's trying to make herself feel normal or do you think she's trying to make him feel normal? Do I think? Ma'am, we have I, I, I don't know who she, I think she's trying to feel normal. I think I would want to feel normal or anybody would want to feel normal so, after so, what happened. So you're now in, 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 interjecting yourself into this. You're saying that your standards mm -hmm. are that if you killed somebody, you would that same day go and have some sort of sexual relations with somebody else. That's the standard that you want to apply? You know I'm not saying that, Mr. Well, ma'am, isn't that what you said? If I were, didn't you just tell me that? Let me rephrase that. I'm not asking you to rephrase it. I'm asking you a question. Didn't you just say, if I, if it were, or if, if it were me, something to that effect? I, I think you probably know that the answer to that is, I that is not my standard. No. You don't, ma'am. I don't go and, and ma'am, behave. We don't, re you, you understand that your standards, personal standards are unimportant here, correct? Okay. But you keep interjecting it by saying, if it were me. Do you, do you agree then that? By you saying, if it were me, you are attempting to interject your standards here, right? I misspoke. When with regard to your standards, in fact, there was an issue that was created in this case because of your standards, wasn't there? I don't know what you're referring to. Do you remember that you told me in our interview that you didn't ask certain questions of the defendant because you were old-fashioned and you were embarrassed? Oh, it's sexual questions? Ma'am, isn't it true that you told uh, me that you were old-fashioned, yes or no? There were sexual questions I did not ask because they do not come easy to me to ask. Yes, that's you, true. You, it was much more strong than that. You indicated that you were old-fashioned, yes or no? Yeah, I'm old-fashioned. And as because you were old-fashioned, that restricted you in asking the defendant certain questions involving the sexual aspect of Mr. Alexander, hers and Mr. Alexander's um, relationship, right? I read about them. Ma'am, I, I know you want to tell me that you read about them, but I, isn't it true that I, you did not ask her about them, right? I asked about them later, after I had spoken with you, after our interview in November, there was a sex tape. I, I did ask her questions. I'm not asking about the sex tape, ma'am. I'm asking. There were questions I did not ask during that I had not asked when you and I um, had our interview, and there were questions I asked after that. Isn't it true that, first of all, you told me that you were old-fashioned, right? Well, the stain. After that, isn't it true that you are now telling us that you then went to talk to the defendant, right? I asked her some questions. You did go to talk to the defendant after our interview, right? Correct. You were still old-fashioned. You were even older when you went to talk to her, right? Objection, I Afterwards. I was well, your standard of being old-fashioned hadn't changed from the first time to the second time when you went to visit her, had it? My, yes or no? My standard changed because I was exposed to a lot of things that I needed to find out about. I'm not, a, so now you're saying that when you went back to talk to the defendant, you are no longer old-fashioned in your approach to this assessment in this case. You haven't defined old-fashioned, and well, maybe you need to do that for me, uh, or maybe I need to do that for you. Ma'am, isn't it true that you were the person that used the word old-fashioned during our interview, correct? Right, but I don't know that you understand what I mean by it. Isn't it true, yes or no, that you were the person that used the term old-fashioned, correct? Yes. And isn't it true that during that time when you used that phrase old-fashioned, you indicated that you were inhibited in your questioning of the defendant. I said I hadn't asked her if she used KY or not, or you who wanna... brought it, if, if that's what you're asking me. I did not specifically ask, did you bring KY, or did you bring Astroglide? I did not do that. Ma'am, isn't it true that that's not even, re well, do, why don't we play it, so that you can take a look at it, listen to it, okay? Okay, okay.
Ma'am, one of the things that you indicated was that there was this issue about astroglide or KY. Do you remember your, your response just now? Yes. Ma'am, isn't it true that when we were talking about this being old fashioned, we weren't talking about that. We were talking about something else. And the answer is yes or no. Do you remember? May we approach? I, I can't do it without speaking. Yes. May continue. And you indicated that in, in conjunction with our conversation involving being old fashioned, something about KY and Astroglide. You, you said something about that, right? Yes. Isn't it true that we were actually talking about something else? Do you remember, yes or no, that we were talking about something else? No, I don't remember. And isn't it true that we were talking about anal sex? Do you remember that now? We were talking about anal sex. No, I'm asking whether or not you remember talking about anal sex in conjunction with the fact that you were old fashioned. I don't remember, I don't remember putting those together. I remember we talked about anal sex. All right, well let, let me go ahead and play the tape for you and maybe that will refresh your recollection, okay? I see that there's a transcript. I'm just yes, you may.
we are going to take one, this will only take a, a approximately okay. a minute, then we'll move on to sure. another area. She said they had normal sex, and that, um, and this is once again, I, I can't recall if it was Bobby Morris or, or Mr. McCartney that they attempted anal sex once, but that it was, you know, uh, they didn't like it. She didn't like it. This attempt at anal sex, whether it was consummated, did you say it was consummated or not? I didn't ask if it was consummated. And if anal sex was it at her insistence or his request, whether it's Mr. Juanes or Mr. McCartney? I didn't ask. Um, whether? Oh, maybe I'm just old-fashioned. I don't know. I, I just, I didn't ask because she said she didn't like it. That was your voice on the tape, correct? Correct. And that's us talking about anal sex, right? Correct. And that refreshes your recollection as to it, correct? Correct. Time. Please be back in the designated area at 1.30. 1.30. Please remember the admonition. Have a nice lunch. You are excused. You may step down. You may step down. Leave or do you want to do it at one? At, at one, but Judge Miss Arias would like to be present. Okay. Deputy. Ms. Arias back at one o'clock. Thank you. <laughs> 